Welcome to this Wisel Excel VBA tutorial. In this part of our series on writing SQL for Excel files, we're going to cover the basics of writing union queries. So the video is all about how to combine multiple tables into a single list, and we'll begin with a simple example of unioning two tables and explain the difference between union and union all. We'll explain how you can sort the results of your union queries and the importance of matching the numbers of columns in each select statement in the query. We'll explain how to map columns which have different names in your different select statements, how to add calculated columns, and to finish the video off, how to add criteria to the results of each select statement. So let's get started. If you've been following along with previous parts of this series, you'll be fairly familiar with the basic setup by now, so you may prefer just to skip to the next chapter of this video. Promise you won't miss anything exciting. If you haven't seen previous parts of the series, here's a quick look at the basic setup. We have a basic macro-enabled workbook, which allows us to run a query by clicking this obviously labeled button. And when we do that, it's going to extract some information from a separate Excel file called Movies. The Movies workbook for this video has a couple of different worksheets with various tables containing information about films released in different years. I have both of those files stored in the same folder and I'll drop a link in the video description so that you can download these starting files and follow along and write the code if you'd like to. I'm going to leave the Movies Workbook open for the duration of the video, but you're very welcome to keep the Movies Workbook closed and all of the code will still work. The code in the Basic Union Queries Macro Enabled Workbook relies heavily on Microsoft ActiveX data objects, which isn't something I'm going to talk about much in this video. We've covered that in a previous series and I'll point you to this playlist and if you're interested in the ActiveX data object side of things, then I'd recommend starting with the How Do I Get Data From A Closed Excel File Using VBA video. Just to show you the basic code working, if I head back to the Basic Union Queries workbook, if I head into the Visual Basic Editor, I've already written a bunch of code that will, first of all, create a simple select statement. This one's going to select data from a named range called Films 2020. And once we've constructed that, it's going to get passed into a separate subroutine which deals with the complicated stuff, such as establishing the connection to the movie's workbook, finding that table of data and extracting it into a record set, our query gets used at this point here to set the source property of the record set object. And then the rest of that code deals with writing out the content of the record set into the worksheet, applying some formatting and tidying things up. So if I head back to my menu sheet in the basic union queries workbook, click the run query button, I get the table of films from the 2020 highest grossing films table on the film year sheet in the movies workbook. So I've run my query once, and that's extracted the list of films stored in the Films 2020 named range in the Movies Workbook. So we've referred to Films 2020 in our select statement. Having a look back at the Movies Workbook on the Film Year Sheet, we've got a range name called Films 2020, consisting of the table of data we've just extracted. Now the next obvious step will be to select the Films 2019 table and the 2018 and 2017 and store those together or output those together in one single continuous list rather than as separate tables. Now in order to do that I can head back to the Visual Basic Editor and then I can concatenate a new line to the end of my current select statement. I can't just write the word select by itself. If I wanted to add another select statement to the same list of outputs, I need to union the second select statement to the first. From that point, everything is exactly the same, however. So I can copy and paste, in fact, just to save a little bit of time. Select star or asterisk to select all of the columns from Films 2019. Having done that, if I head back to my menu sheet in the Basic Union Queries workbook, I can click the Run Query button, and that will produce a list consisting of all of the films from the 2020 table and all of the films from the 2019 table. Just before we move on and start including the other tables in the same union query, it's worthwhile understanding the difference between union and union all. So we've written a union query, which automatically scans for and removes duplicate rows in your output. As it turns out, because there are no duplications in rows between the 2020 and the 2019 tables, we get all 20 results. But just to demonstrate that the union query does remove duplicates, we're going to change our select statement to try to select two copies of the 2020 sheet, or the 2020 range name, I should say. 
So with the union keyword all by itself, if we head back to the menu sheet and we run that query, we'll find that we only get 10 rows. And that's because all 10 rows that we've tried to select in the second select statement are exact duplicates of the first. Now watch what happens if we head back to the Visual Basic Editor and include the all keyword after the union keyword. If we then head back to the menu sheet and run that query again, we get 20 results, two sets of the same 10 rows, of course, because we've selected from the same table, but just to demonstrate that the all keyword does not remove duplicates. Now, even if you're not expecting duplicates in your output, it's still worthwhile considering using the all keyword. So if I select union all from films 2019, there will be no difference in the number of results that I get but because the union all keyword doesn't have to scan for duplicates, you may find a small performance benefit to using the all keyword even when you don't need to. So one last time, if we head back to the menu sheet, we can run that query again and we get the same 20 results, but this time using union all rather than using union. One small difference you might notice in the results of the union and union all queries is that the rows are sorted differently. So this sheet shows the list of results generated by the union all query. And if I switch back to sheet two, which is generated by the union query, you can clearly see the order is different. Now, as always, if you want to guarantee a sort order of your results, you should always add an order by clause to the query. So let's say we wanted to make sure that our films were sorted in descending order of worldwide gross. So the most uh, successful film financially sits at the top of the list. We can do that by adding an order by clause to the query. If we head back to the Visual Basic Editor, normally you add the order by clause to the end of each individual select statement that you write. But in a union query or a union or query, you add one single order by clause to the end of the entire list of select statements. So I'm going to concatenate another continuation character to the end of the last line and then open up some more double quotes, add an order by, which I'll attempt to spell correctly, and then refer to the column name whose values I want to sort by. So that was worldwide gross. I then want to say that that's in descending order. So I'll add a DESC to the end, close the double quotes, and then head back to the menu sheet, run the query again. And I'll see that I get the list of results this time in descending order of worldwide gross, which is the order that I wanted. From here, we can simply add in the other tables to our query. So we've got, if I head back to the Visual Basic Editor, a 2018 and a 2017 sheet or range name to include. So let's copy and paste the union all line. And we'll paste that in before the order by clause, change the year numbers to 2018 and 2017, and then run that query once more from the menu sheet and we'll find the complete list of all 40 films from those four different tables sorted in descending order of worldwide gross. One thing which is absolutely critical for the success of our union query is that all of the select statements produce the same number of columns. So where we're selecting from the named ranges on the film years worksheet, all four tables or range names have the same set of four columns. It wouldn't actually matter if those columns had different names. The important thing is simply that the number of columns is the same. So for the next example, I'd like to try to union in the film worksheet. And you can clearly see here that the number of columns is significantly different. There are far more than four of them. So things aren't going to work quite so smoothly in this case, but let's give it a try anyway. Let's head back to the Visual Basic Editor. And then at the end of the Films 2017 line, in fact, let's just copy and paste the Films 2017 line. And we'll attempt to union all, select everything from the film worksheet. So because I'm referencing a worksheet rather than a range name, I need to add a dollar sign to the end of the sheet name. So film dollar. Of course, having done that, if I head back to the menu sheet and I attempt to run that query, things fail miserably, but the error message is quite clear. The number of columns in the two selected tables or queries do not match. So that is absolutely critical that that is the case. So clearly we need to be a little more picky about which columns we select from the film worksheet. For this example to work, we're going to select the film ID column the title column, the studio column, and the box office column. 
and we're going to map those four columns to their equivalents in the film years table, so rank, title, distributor and worldwide gross. Now you'll notice that there's only one column with a matching name between these two worksheets, but that's absolutely fine, the column names don't matter. The important thing is that the number of columns is the same. So heading back to the Visual Basic Editor, rather than saying select all or select asterisk, we can remove that and replace it with a reference to, first of all, the film ID column, followed by a comma, and then the title column, and another comma, the studio column, and another comma, and finally the box office column. So having done that, we can head back to the menu sheet and run that query again. And this time, because all the columns have, or we have the same number of columns in all of the select statements, we happily get a set of results. If we're going to be specific about the columns we're selecting from one of our select statements, it makes sense to do the same thing for each of the other select statements in the query. That means that we can get rid of columns we don't really need, such as the rank column. We're mixing the rank column with the film ID, which doesn't really make sense. So we can omit that entirely. It also means that if we had any design changes to the tables on the film years worksheet, so for instance, if we inserted a new column between uh, title and distributor, then that wouldn't mess up the mapping of our columns in our union query. So let's make sure we select the title, distributor and worldwide gross columns, and we'll get rid of the film ID column from our select statement at the end of the union query. So let's get rid of the film ID first of all, from our final select from the film worksheet, and then in the first select statement, we're going to start by referring to the title column, then the distributor column. I'll try to spell that correctly eventually. I should have just copied and pasted it. And then finally, the worldwide gross. And again, I appreciate I could have just copied and pasted that from our order by clause, which perhaps I should have done. Anyway, having listed out that set of columns now, we can happily copy that and then paste it over the top of the asterisk in each of the other select statements. So now we've clearly controlled the order of the columns we're selecting and exactly how many we're selecting from each of the separate tables and worksheets. So when we head back to the menu sheet and run that query again, we know exactly which set of columns we're going to get. As well as choosing which columns we select, we can also change the names of the output columns by assigning an alias to the ones we want to change. The nice thing here is that we only need to do this in the first select statement. Those are the only aliases or column names that the query will read. So if we head back to the Visual Basic Editor, and I wanted to say rename the title field as film name. So we can say select title as film name. And then if we head back to the menu sheet, and run the query again, we'll see that the first column gets renamed as film name, even though we only added the alias to the first select statement. We can also add calculated columns or expression columns to each of the select statements in our union query. So for instance, in this case, it would be nice to know which year each film was released in. That's reasonably straightforward to do for the four tables on the film years worksheet. We could just type in the literal number of the year that the film was released in, so 2020 for this table and so on. It's a little trickier for the film worksheet because we've got not just the year stored, we've got the entire release date. But we can extract the year from the release date using a simple function. And if you've watched the video on using date and time functions, then you'll be fairly familiar with how that works. So again, the important thing is that each of our select statements must have the same number of columns in it. So if we head to the first select statement and after worldwide gross, after the last column, just before the from clause, we could specify that we want to insert the number 2020 and we want to give this an alias as well. So let's say as film year or release year, let's call it release year. Okay. Now that we've aliased that column in that position in the first select statement, for each of the subsequent queries, we simply need to write out the value that we want. So 2019 for the film's 2019 table, 2018, and then 2017. For the film worksheet, things are a little trickier, as I mentioned. We can't just write in the number of the year because the films are released in a wide range of different years. But what we can do is calculate the year from the film's release date by using the year function. 
So we can say year, open some parentheses, and then refer to the release date field or column, close the square brackets, close the round brackets, and then having done that, head back to the menu sheet, click the run query button again, and we'll have a new column containing the new value we've either typed in or calculated. One interesting thing we can do in a union query that we can't do in a normal select statement is use a column alias in the order by clause. So let's say, for example, we wanted to temporarily sort our films in descending order of release year, followed by descending order of worldwide gross. If we head back to the Visual Basic Editor, we can happily add a reference to the release year alias in the order by clause, something we couldn't do in a normal select statement, as I mentioned. So I'm just going to copy and paste the release year, and then say that I want that sorted in descending order, so the year 2020 will appear at the top. Type in a comma, and we'll subsequently sort in descending order of worldwide gross. We can then head back to the menu sheet in the workbook, click the Run Query button again, and you can hopefully clearly see here that we're sorting in descending order of year and then by worldwide gross. Just time to tidy up a little bit, I think. If I head back to the menu sheet, I'm going to click the Delete All But Menu Sheet button just to clear up all these extra worksheets we've created, and then head back to the Visual Basic Editor before we move on to the next section. For the final part of the video, I'd like to add criteria to my query so that I only return films whose distributor or studio column contains the word Disney. Now I'll need to be a little careful about that because the film studio or, or distributor might be listed as uh, Walt Disney Pictures, so the word Disney could be somewhere inside the string, or it may be, I don't know, Disney Pixar, for example, or it might just be the word Disney, as in many of the examples in the Film Years worksheet. The WHERE clause, if you want to add one, has to be added to each individual select statement if you want to guarantee that it will affect them all. So let's just demonstrate that if I head back to the Visual Basic Editor. Let's say I only added the WHERE clause to the very last part of my query, just as we did with the ORDER BY clause earlier on. So after the final union all, I can add a new line. I'll just indent this one space just to make it a little easier to read, and I'll say WHERE and then because this WHERE clause is added to the SELECT statement where the column name is called STUDIO, I must make sure I reference the correct column there. So WHERE STUDIO LIKE, and then in some single quotes, wrapped in some percentage symbol wildcard characters, I can type in the word DISNEY. I can then close the double quotes and concatenate a continuation character. And if I head back to the menu sheet and I run that query again, you can clearly see I've got way more films than just the Disney films. So for 2020, 2019, 18 and 17, I have things other than Disney. But once I get to the list of results produced from the film worksheet, then I get the Disney pictures or Walt Disney pictures movies. So if I want to make sure that I only get the Disney containing films or films whose distributor or studio contains Disney, I must add that same criterion to each of the other select statements. So I can head back to the Visual Basic Editor. And I'm just going to copy that WHERE clause from my original uh, example there. And I'm going to paste it in in between each select statement. Now, because the name of the column is different this time, it's distributor, not studio. I must make sure that I change that as well. So I can then copy and paste that to avoid having to rename it again. Paste it in on the next line and again before after the next union select all or union all select I should say and then finally after the film's 2017 select statement. So having done that we can once again head back to the menu sheet and run that query again and we now get only the distributors or studios whose name contains the word Disney from all of the select statements in the entire query. So there we go, there's the absolute basics of writing union and union all queries. In the next part of the series we'll take things a bit further and include some grouping and aggregating with our union queries. So hope you're looking forward to that one and that you found this one useful. Thanks as always for watching and we'll see you next time.